everybody. Look at those clouds. It's probably going to rain in another 20 minutes. So, yeah, I've got a 20 minute break between um, some light showers. And let me show you what's happening here. Yesterday, or maybe it's day before yesterday, I showed you the, the animal food plot. So today, I'm showing you these beds. And there aren't any stakes in the beds right now, but this is mostly Roma tomatoes and sweet peppers. And the rows are pretty close, so they're, they're kind of spread out a little bit. And then it seems like in every bed I am planting some kind of squash or pumpkin. And these are basically small pumpkin mounds. I hear geese off in the distance. And you might be interested, since it's so close to Sunflower Row, I have not extended it yet, but I still plan to. But I'm treating um, the puny sunflowers, <laughs> the ones that need to play catch up. Um, I'm going ahead and treating them with a little bit more TLC, and so they're getting um, some extra fertilizer almost every day. Literally, almost every day I'm giving them a low dose of fertilizer, and they are catching up to the other ones. If you can see that, they're catching up. Yeah. They're not so far beneath the, the larger ones. So I'm really happy about that because there's still a height discrepancy of almost a foot, but at least it's not two feet. And if I would have left them alone, that's what would have happened. Oh, now look at this one. The sunflower's giving up. <laughs> It's giving up. So it's starting to create a head. It's not going to get very big. So I went ahead and I planted the rest of my uh, yellow crookneck and I think some uh, green squash. I think it's like uh, some kind of hybrid zucchini. We'll see what comes up. Um, so some of the uh, seeds that I planted, seeds are up. My nasturtiums that are also going to climb these A-frames, they're up. Now this circle looks like it's got a little bit of grass in it, which it does. It does have some grass in it, but it's mostly flowers. There's lots of flowers, and I'm hesitant to step off into it. I've got places around the bed that I can walk because I made sure that I made a flat enough and wide enough path that I could kind of step in even to the center and pull up. See these morning glory fakes? how they spread really quickly by, oh, two leaves turn into three, and yeah, that's not happening. So, yeah, I see a lot of uh, flowers in here, flower starts, not flowers yet. But I mainly just kind of walk around and look for the weeds. And I take the weeds and try to at least discourage them from continuing. Man, there's an explosion of grasshopper babies here. Sure hope the, the toads and stuff come back. 
we don't have any skinks that I've seen because this, you know, they don't really know about this place. This is the onion bed, and there, there are a few greens coming up. I see a couple ant hills. I'm gonna have to do some diatomaceous earth out here, and hopefully that'll dissuade the uh, the ants from wanting to continue. But yeah, pretty much come out and uh, check the bed um, once or twice a day. Honestly, sometimes things will pop up in the same day that weren't even out of the ground earlier. And that includes the weeds. So I come and try to get the ones that are going to be the hardest to pull out or, or get a hoe or something like that later. That's usually what I, I look for and I try to take care of them up front but for the most part yeah anything I think that you know can wait until I get a hoe I'll take care of it then and the rest gets pulled up the same day so I mean yeah every day I'm out here usually I'm out here for a few hours but yeah when when it's gonna rain I mean honestly this is a garden. You can literally stay all day long and still not get everything done. So you can see I started a mulch path um, between the onion and greens bed and the three sisters bed. And you can't even tell that I spent um, all day, I think it was Thursday, going between these rows and with my hoe and weeding between them. I mean, you can see the hoe marks, <laughs> but you can't see where, you know, I got up all this grass and weeds because they're right back in between the rows. Now, I could do the smart thing and go ahead and and uh, put some uh, cloth over the rows to at least protect them and not have to keep hoeing them down because, look, but all my corn isn't up yet. All my beans aren't up yet, and all my squash isn't up yet, and so I don't want to inhibit their growth when I don't know quite yet what side they're going to pop out on. Or There's some more squash coming up now. Yeah, my squash is definitely... Um, popping up late. Look at that, there's a nasturtium. This type of nasturtium will climb too, but uh, it won't get as far before it stops. It's not a determinant per se, but it'll only get a few feet, so it's not going to be allowed to choke out the corn. But I just thought it'd be cool to have a different pop of color in here. And there's a couple of uh, nasturtium seeds like that and some of them are even um, determinants and they're actually a really cool container variety Now, all the way to this brick is planted, and most of them have labels. Yay, me! <laughs> I have some empty containers. All, well, they're not empty. They have um, potting soil, but, yeah, I don't have things in them just yet. But we're working on it. It's just a lot, you know, to do when it's sometimes just one person. So... Now, out of all my Boston pickling cucumbers, I've only got one that has made it through um, the hottest part of the day. I've even brought these pots over, or these buckets over, to try to shade them, and yeah, it's just not, it hadn't worked out that way.
there's grass again and weeds around this TP here. I mean, every time it rains, there's also an explosion of grass and weeds. So I don't even know why I'm surprised. <laughs> in with the squash of course is for grass and weeds. I think you guys are, are getting it. Now these in the buckets are pretty much ready to start being tied up to the uh, TPs just a little. Just I don't even think I'm going to tie them. I've got some clips and I think I'm going to clip them to the TPs. I think that'll be a lot better. I've added a little bit of extra potting soil and that's because you know I always start off with a little bit and then as the plants need support I add a little more soil to the bucket the lavender is iffy but I believe that's because we've got um, stink bugs and stuff hanging out and you know, they like those leaves down there. I just think it's, you know, when I can catch them, I, I try to, you know, take care of them. And I forgot my water bottle again, but I have a water bottle with a little bit of detergent in it. And, yeah, that usually takes care of them. So the hanging pots or hanging buckets, I do have some plant pots that are hanging. But you can see that these bottles here, they are just not, um, they had actually fallen, and I think it was birds, but yeah, they actually had fallen. So that's not good. <laughs> um, I think the seeds are probably gone from them, and I need to re either pot them or just get larger bottles. They weren't going to really make it like this anyway, there's just not enough soil in them so I probably should have done two liter bottles or at least a 20 ounce so my little cherry tomatoes in my milk jug are doing just fabulous these cherry tomatoes are doing good I don't know how long they'll stay doing good there's a little caterpillar in there look at him you can't see him but he's in there Actually, there's several of them. The downside to the rain is it is inevitable that the bugs come back 